Hello, and welcome to another edition of History with Mr. Mink. And today, we're talking about the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa. So I don't remember when or where I was when I learned what the Mona Lisa looked like. It's just one of those things I've always recognized, like the McDonald's golden arches, or that look your parents give you that says, whatever you're doing, you need to stop doing that. The Mona Lisa is widely regarded as the most famous painting in the world. Have you ever wondered why? There's a certain mystery around her gaze. Is she smiling? Is she not smiling? What's she looking at? According to science, it appears as if she's always looking at your right ear. Pause the video and give it a shot by moving around. Yeah. Definitely looking at my right ear. Other than being considered a masterpiece among the art community, what makes her so popular? Well, the answer is for a number of reasons. From being painted by one of the best painters of all time, Leonardo da Vinci, to some mystery around who the woman is, to spending some time in Napoleon's bedroom. The thing that really made the Mona Lisa famous, though, was being stolen from the Louvre Museum. Get ready as we explore the history of the one and only Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa was painted by world-renowned painter Leonardo da Vinci. Do you know what it was painted on? Stick around a little longer to find out. It's thought da Vinci started the painting between 1503 and 1506. Some researchers suggest that da Vinci may have continued working on the painting all the way until 1519, which was the year he died. Talk about obsessed. Believe you me, this woman is a make me nuts. According to the art teacher in my building, Mr. Moore, who's the reason we have this beat right here on the wall, he agrees that it was definitely done between 1503 and 1506. So why did da Vinci paint this masterpiece in the first place? The Mona Lisa is commonly thought to have been a painting of Lisa Gerardi. She was the wife of friends Francisco Francesco del G Francesco del Yoc a few moments later the wife of Francesco del Yoconda who was a cloth merchant from Florence Italy oh uh, he was also a noted female slave trader the common theory is Francesco commissioned da Vinci to paint his wife as a gift to hang in their house it was to celebrate the birth of their new son they never got to keep the painting however as da Vinci kept it with him until he died there are several other theories as to who the woman could be, but this theory seems to hold the most weight. According to Mr. Moore, the reason da Vinci kept the painting is simply because they never finished paying for it, which would also explain why the painting has spots that aren't finished as well. They didn't want to pay for it? He didn't want to finish it. It's not like he sought out to say, hey, this lady's going to be my masterpiece, and really, it's not his masterpiece. It's just the most famous. Fun fact. Some people believe the painting is actually a self-portrait of da Vinci in drag. This could be a possible explanation for why he kept the painting. There are even plans to dig up his skull and use technology to rebuild his face and see if it resembles the painting. Creepy. Da Vinci died in 1519 in France, and the painting was acquired by King Francis I. Him and da Vinci had become good friends. It became part of the French royal collection. King Francis' private art collection was so big it was actually converted into a semi-public art gallery. After being in possession by multiple kings, during the French Revolution, the painting was stored in a warehouse for safety. In 1800, some famous guy named Napoleon hung the Mona Lisa in his bedroom. Wrong Napoleon. In 1804, the painting was moved to the Louvre Museum. What is the Mona Lisa painted on? If you said it was painted on a scroll, you're wrong. If you said it was painted on canvas, you're also wrong. The Mona Lisa is actually painted on a poplar plank. The Mona Lisa is painted on wood. Apparently, this wasn't uncommon back then. I gotta be honest. When I pictured myself holding the Mona Lisa, it was like the scene in National Treasure when they're unrolling it onto the table and everyone's terrified. I really thought it was painted on a scroll, curling up, tearing at the edges. I'm sure that that thought is not smart to those in the art community. The Mona Lisa still wasn't world famous though. That wouldn't happen for another 107 years when it was stolen from the Louvre. In the summer of 1911, Vincenzo Perugia an Italian handyman was hired by the Louvre Museum to make glass cases for some of its paintings, including the Mona Lisa. He was upset that a great painting by an Italian painter was displayed in France. He even claimed that Napoleon had stolen it, which is just absurd. We know it was gifted to Francis the first. Fun fact! The Mona Lisa is the highest valued painting ever. In 1962, it was insured for $100 million. Today, the painting is valued anywhere between $700 million and $3 billion. Stick around to find out why it can't be sold though. Anyways, old Vinny, being the Italian patriot he was, decided he was going to steal the Mona Lisa. So how'd he do it? Well, uh, turns out he just uh, hid in a closet overnight and then uh, took it off the wall the next morning and walked out the door. No one even noticed the painting was gone for 24 hours, a whole day. 
Turns out security was not a strong point of the Louvre in 1911. Images of the Mona Lisa began circulating in every major newspaper around the world. Overnight, common people all over the globe recognized the Mona Lisa. She was the most famous painting in the world immediately, and her story captured the hearts of people everywhere. The investigation into the robbery was not handled well. And at one point, even Pablo Picasso, who himself is one of the greatest painters of all time, was investigated for the theft. The head of Paris police stepped down, and eventually Perugia was caught trying to sell the painting back in Florence, Italy. The crazy thing is, he'd already been questioned twice about the robbery. He was actually considered by many back in Italy to be a hero for bringing the painting back. Some question his patriotic motives though and tend to believe he just wanted to make some money. When the Mona Lisa was discovered in December 1913, the whole world was practically cheering. Now, not only was the Mona Lisa the most famous painting in the world, she was also the most popular. Some historians suggest that if Perugia had simply stolen a different da Vinci painting, most of us wouldn't have any idea who or what the Mona Lisa even is. Some people aren't fans apparently, as the Mona Lisa has been vandalized a couple of times over the years. In 1956, one person threw acid on the painting and another threw a rock at it. It has since been covered with bulletproof glass. This came in handy when someone came at her with hairspray in 1974, and again in 2009 when, according to Reuters, a frustrated Russian threw a cup at her. While the Mona Lisa is the highest valued painting in the world, it will never be sold. Since it's part of the Louvre collection, French Heritage Law states that it belongs to the public forever. The Mona Lisa can be found all over our modern media, from a song by Panic at the Disco, to a movie starring Julia Roberts. Quiet. Today you just listen. To a best-selling book by Dan Brown. It's safe to say the image of the Mona Lisa will be forgotten anytime soon. So there you have it. The story of how a masterpiece painting, painted by one of the greatest painters of all time, became famous thanks to a patriotic, maybe, handyman nearly 400 years after it was painted. That's the history of the Mona Lisa. Thank you for watching. Be sure to click the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. See you next time.